I always loved, as a kid, looking at dictionaries and encyclopedias and seeing these uh, diagrams of uh, how uh, an internal combustion engine works. And you see these beautiful fine lines. Uh, I, I, I just, I love the, uh, the color in the black and white of pen and ink. We had an assistant principal, Mrs. Goodhart. She called for my mother, one of the many times she called for my mother to come up to school. And she said, uh, there's a school in Manhattan called the High School of Industrial Art. <clears throat> and you better try to get him in there. And it, it was a competitive school. You had to take a test. And, uh, she said, because he's going to wind up in jail uh, if, uh, if, if not for that. Because, and she realized that the only thing I could do was make pictures. It was the best three years of my life at, 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 up to that point. I was with kids from all over the city uh, who, who made art. And then when I uh, graduated from uh, high school, it was during the Korean War. And rather than waiting for the government to call me, uh, I, uh, I volunteered for two years, and I was in, in the Army for two years, and I made pictures in the Army for two years. Uh, and I was assigned to the post, and part of their duty was to make training aids, posters, big 62 by 72 inch posters. I learned how to use an airbrush, and uh, it was just great fun. And I wound up in Germany for a year, and that was wonderful as well. Remember, I'm, I'm a, like 19 years old, uh, from Brooklyn. I was never west of the Hudson River uh, in, in my life. And, and here I am uh, uh, taking a seven-day leave and going to Paris and going to the Louvre. And, uh, uh, it, was, it was wonderful. So I uh, got out of service, uh, started working at uh, salary jobs. Uh, and then at one point, uh, I, I was so fed up. Uh, I, I think this is the pivotal point in, in my life or career, or my alleged career. Uh, I uh, I absolutely couldn't show up to work one day. I was working for Wallace Brown, greeting cards, and it was such a horrendously boring uh, job, I just couldn't show up. And uh, I was looking through an annual, the uh, art director's annual, and it was a name list of, uh, of the artists that they represented. So I just turned around from the kitchen table, dialed the number, uh, I said, I'd like to make an appointment to show some samples, and she said, uh, Mr. Cooper sees people on Thursdays. This was a Wednesday. So I said, okay. Uh, so I went into my studio. I did have a studio. And uh, started making samples. And I was doing little watercolors and pen and ink drawings. So I did about 15 pieces that evening. Next morning, I, go, I show up at Cooper Studios. I went in, I saw Chuck Cooper. He says, what do you want? I say, I want to make a living and be able to look at myself in the mirror. And I said, uh, all right, uh, be here Monday morning. O on my way home, I stopped off at Wallace Brown and resigned. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I'm out of work, literally. I'm a freelance illustrator represented by a studio. The first year, I made $1,800. Now, I, it was lean. And then uh, I wound up getting a piece uh, getting into the Saturday Evening Post. So I figured, oh, my, I died and just went to heaven. I'm, I'm going to be in the same magazine that Norman Rockwell uh, pretty much owned, in a way. And the, the piece got into the Society of Illustrators show, it got into the Type Directors show, got into the Art Directors show. It uh, literally put me on the map. And then things really turned around and uh, uh, started being working for the major magazines and some major advertising accounts. And uh, that, that went on for several years. When I got the Saturday Evening Post job, Cooper got it for me. The, the, the philosophy then was uh, they didn't care about the editorial work because the money was in the advertising. But the editorial work, the magazine work, uh, attracted attention. So they would attract attention to the artist. The artist was represented by the studio, and then the studio would sell advertising art. So it was a great uh, a mutual benefit uh, for all. And uh, to go forward, uh, I started teaching in 1963, uh, and I loved teaching. The single most important thing about being a good teacher uh, is to... You can't say it, 
but, but by actions, convince the students that there's no place in the world you would rather be than right here in the classroom working with you people. You cannot be a good teacher and, and impose your feelings, your prejudices, your uh, 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 favorite isms uh, on the student. And I think that's it. it, it it's kind of like shut up and listen, and you can listen with your eyes as well. Uh, and uh, I started a class of uh, the history of illustration, and uh, the, the reason I started uh, was I'd be critiquing a, a particular piece of work and said, this is wonderful, beautiful, and it reminds me of so-and-so. Uh, and then this blank look would, would cross the student's face. And uh, so then uh, I felt, well, why don't we have a class? Uh, uh, we have hist art history, why not illustration history? So, uh, fast forward, I uh, stumble in to uh, an assignment to illustrate uh, paperback covers for Zane Gray. Here, I had never done a Western before, uh, and uh, immediately, like the next day, we're driving around the neighborhood, the area, and I see uh, a poster on a telephone pole, uh, Rodeo at Cimarron Ranch, and uh, uh, I, go to, I go to the rodeo to get photographs reference for my Zane Gray cover. And I had a lot of fun shooting the photographs, I had a lot of fun watching the rodeo. So I, I continued doing a series of rodeo drawings and I put them together and it, in a book dummy, uh, brought it up to uh, Green Willow uh, uh, Publishing and uh, the, uh, the thing became a hit. Uh, it, it won the Blue Bonnet Award, which is a Texas children's book award. I was getting fan mail from kids named Bubba in Tex Texas. Uh, and it, it, was, it was great fun. And it, it, so I wound up joining the Professional Rodeo Cowboy Association. Uh, and the, uh, the only Jewish New Yorker uh, west of the Miss east of the Mississippi uh, uh, to, to be in the organization. And, uh, but the Becoming a, a member of that association gave me permission and, and credentials to go into any arena uh, and photograph any rodeo sponsored by the Professional Rodeo Cowboy Association uh, and uh, un unobstructed views of uh, rodeo action. You know, just try not to get killed. From there, uh, I uh, would periodically, maybe once a year, talk to J James Bama. Uh, also a Cooper Studio guy, uh, and uh, Jimmy said, uh, you know, he liked my rodeo drawings, and he said, but let me show you something that's more interesting. I said, what's that? He said, uh, powwows. He said, there's a powwow tonight at the parade grounds uh, in, in Cody, and I went, and I thought I died and went to heaven. It, it, was, it was incredible. Uh, the smell the, the, uh, uh, of cooking food, uh, the... Uh, the, it was late in the afternoon, the sun was low, uh, and uh, streaming through the feathers. Uh, it, it was just uh, in, it was incredible. Uh, so I shot a lot of photographs, uh, went home, and I started on a, a series of Native Americans. Uh, it, it was nothing but fun. But it, it, it leads me to say uh, uh, I'm not a Western artist, you know, like Paul Cowley or Jimmy Bama. Uh, but I'm an illustrator who's done some Western illustrations. Vin de Fate is, is a science fiction illustrator. Uh, I'm not. I'm an illustrator who's done some science fiction. Uh, you know, I'm not a, a, an automotive artist, uh, but I've done a series of automobiles. So uh, I'm just, um, in a way, a kind of a, a journeyman artist that uh, is attracted to some particular subject matters. I, I just uh, started uh, working on themes of uh, uh, subjects that, that uh, were meaningful to me as a kid. And, uh, and those are the purest uh, uh, memories. I loved cowboy and Indian movies. I loved monster movies. Uh, automobiles uh, became a, uh, uh, an important uh, subject. Uh, when I got older, in my teens, 
uh, with uh, my hoodlum friends, we'd go to Coney Island to uh, just hang out, and meet ladies, and uh, it was just great fun. And uh, I liked every aspect of it: uh, the smells, the sounds, the the the, 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 the views, uh, and of course uh, the beach. And baseball, you know, being a Brooklyn kid, the Brooklyn Dodgers, the only Dodgers, not the imposters out on the left coast, the uh, the almost unlikely uh, conclusion to my baseball stuff was uh, a one-man show at Cooperstown at, at the Hall of Fame. And, you know, it doesn't get much better than that except uh, the Rockwell Museum. The astonishing fact that I can go through life, I'm 80 years old, doing for a living what other people do as a hobby, uh, and, uh, and actually make a living doing this for, for all these years, uh, uh, I, I think is, uh, you know, I still don't believe it, but, but, but it, it's happened. Art is not what I do, it's what I am. <laughs>